Hello there, welcome to the first of my videos delving into OpenTX. Kind of the, hey, somebody told me to buy an OpenTX radio, now what do I do? So I wanted to take you through the initial setup and configuring the model, all that sort of stuff, the things many of us take for granted because we've had these for a while. And ironically enough, kind of as soon as you've created one model, that's almost the only time you'll do that because in subsequent things, if you're flying the same stuff, you will just copy that model over and over and, and use it again. But anyway, we're imagining you just got this out the box. So let's say you've put some batteries in, you turn it on and essentially you get this. Now they might come with something that's just called model one. What I've done in this one is I've added a few models but I've gone back and, and pretending that I haven't put the SD card in yet. And I make this point because many people think the SD card's there for the model memory. It's not. If we look, we see I've got a whole bunch of models here. That's actually held in the internal memory of the radio itself, which is why you can only get like 60, 64 models before it runs out of memory, something like that. You can back up the models to SD card, but they're not actually held there. Mostly, what this uh, the bulk of the storage on this one and you don't need a big one this is only a two gig card um, are the sounds you'll notice when i turned it on it didn't say anything the other things you'll have in there are things like the the lua scripts that we run to configure things like crossfire and if you've got any firmware you want to update things that would be stored on the card so i wanted to take you first off through a couple of the initial settings you should do and then what you'd actually do with the card to get it set up ready for your radio and i'm using this one this is the jumper t12 pro uh, it's the same thing no matter what you're on, whether you're on a type of Tyrannus from Free Sky or another jumper or something else. The only difference is going to be the layout of the buttons and some of the sort of shortcuts. So on this one, I think this is pretty much universal. The enter takes you through to the models, the back takes you back. And on Tyrannus is like there's a page button and if you hold down the page button that goes to telemetry. On this one it's uh, you hold down the down button. So it's it's normally a long press of something will take you to a shortcut and a short press will just act as a, a regular button. But let's go first to the actual radio setup. And on this one I hold down this button here. A few things you might want to do. Um, sort out your date and time. There's no particular reason for it. Um, I suppose it's just nice. I suppose when you save stuff it might put little tags on it. More important here is, is the battery range. Um, it's got, if we have a look back here, it should have a little battery symbol there. So it's a 7.7 volts and it's giving me a kind of virtual, here's how much battery you've got left. It, it gets this because you tell it how much battery to actually expect. This has got two 18650s in the back. So that's going to be a maximum of 8.4 volts and you can safely discharge these down to about 3 volts. Some 18650s go a bit lower check it but six seems reasonable so make sure your battery range is right there and if you're going to swap out and you've got something like a, a life battery on 3s which i do for my x9d that goes up to sort of nine point something so i need to make sure i know which one i'm on the um, other things you might like to look at in this part if we go down the page a bit The battery low warning, again, quite quite handy because, you know, you don't want to discharge your batteries all the way down to 3 volts and then it start beeping. So this is going to start telling me it's battery low at 6.5 volts. It gives me plenty of time to um, finish what I'm doing and go back and sort stuff out. I've got a country code set up. I don't think it does much. Metric units, that's only really applicable if you're going to be using things which actually measures distance, sort of feet or meters. Uh, it should come out of the box like this, but if you're going to use a SIM, your USB mode is either going to be a joystick or SD card. Um, I, I find it useful to say R, and when you plug something in, uh, it'll, it'll basically say, do you want to connect this as a joystick or a USB? So this is the other important thing, whether you're mode 1, 2, 3 or 4. Mode 2, very popular, the throttle is over here. Uh, that's to your and this is obviously pitch and roll and that says it down here if you need to change that uh, press return and you can go through the other modes obviously if you're mode one this will be your throttle you need to make sure that's not sprung and that's going to be something that's going to be on slightly different on all the various types of radios so check out how to basically put the spring back in this side and, and take it out of that side okay so that's your sort of your minimum setup on the radio the next thing you want to do is get 
your SD card sorted. But before you do that, you actually need to know uh, exactly what version of the phone we have on. Now, fortunately, most of these radios will tell you now. On the radio setup screen, if we go left and right, we can go through the various things. SD card, it, it would normally have the directories there. Obviously, we haven't got anything in. And the tools, mostly missing because that's run from the SD card. So the thing we want here is this bit. It tells us we're running OpenTX T12, which is the particular version for this radio. And this is the important bit. We're on version 234, and that means we need to now go and download version 234 of the SD card contents. So let's do that now. So this is where I would get my SD card contents from, OpenTX.org, which contains all the firmware and updates to OpenTX and things. You wouldn't actually update the firmware through this. I'll show you how you would do that in an upcoming episode. But for now, let's find our actual SD card we want. So we've got a whole bunch of news items for the releases and we had OpenTX234. As you see, it's not the most up to date, um, but it's not too far out. So we're going to go ahead and click on that one. As I said, uh, we'll, we'll cover upgrading firmware uh, in another episode. But this just explains what's on 234. And the important thing down here is we've got the SD card content for 234. And it says here 234 uses 23 version 0025, no changes since 233. Uh, obviously, there's multiple versions. So if you click on that, it's then got a whole bunch of slightly less friendly, but essentially, you've got all your different types of radios here. And they're all different because mostly the screens are different, different resolutions, different ways of doing the graphics, that sort of thing. But uh, we're going to hit uh, T12 because that's what I've got here. And as it said there, let's get the version 025.zip. Now, when this is downloaded, it's a simple case of unzipping it and then moving that contents to an SD card. So here it is just installed in the root directory of my SD card here, which I've helpfully called untitled. I haven't titled it. And if you were to look in this, you'd notice most of it's kind of empty except sounds, which has really the bulk of what's going on in there. There's an important file here called OpenTX SD card version. If we look inside it, it literally just has this little piece of text saying 2.3 version 0025. I'll show you why this is important. Let's say we downloaded this version 0026 and then we moved it to our SD card and we put that SD card in our radio. What would happen? Okay, so here we are with that wrongly downloaded SD card version. Let's see what happens. Welcome to OpenTX. Well, that sounds good so far. Oh, so I wanted to show this because if you've ever had this before and you're like, what's going on? This is basically, it's warning you there's a mismatch between the SD card version you have and the actual version you've got on your radio. So this radio knows it's running 2.3 version 0025, but we've got the 2.6 version. In many cases, there will hardly be any differences, but the warning is important just to make sure you know about it. Obviously, if we were to go and upgrade our firmware independently, we would expect this to flash up because our firmware would be newer than the SD card uh, information. So yeah, just to say, if you've got this, you now know why you've possibly got the wrong version. And the shortcut, of course, is just to change that file to make it read the right thing. But should there be any differences in the Lua scripts or anything else, um, slight differences in the firmware looking for different vocal samples or something like that, that's going to go slightly wrong. So always worth getting on the right version. So I'm going to put the right version on there and come back. OK, so now we've got the correct version on. Welcome to OpenTX. It'll just tell you, welcome to OpenTX. And it'll know how to say various things. It'll tell you if, for example, trim center. you've got our trims in the middle, if we go low battery. Uh, there's a myriad of, of things it knows about. It knows about how to talk about timers and things. And you'll be familiar, if you're watching my videos, that I don't have that default voice on here. I've got another one. And we'll be looking at how you can get different voices later. And we'll be looking at how we can assign a voice to a switch and stuff in upcoming videos. But for now, you've done the basics. You've set up the initial screen of your radio and you've installed the SD card. Fantastic. Next time, we're going to dive in and we're actually going to go through the process of creating a model, binding it and setting it up on Betaflight. So... From this point of view, I'm kind of assuming most of people are, are flying quads and stuff. 
Uh, obviously, if there's people that are desperate to know what to do if they're flying fixed wing, then you can always ping me a message. But yes, for the next video, we're going to be doing model setup and going on to beta flight and showing what we have to do in order to just get that perfectly set up there. So join me then. It'll be soon. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.